ever dream of ditching the nine to five, uh, becoming your own boss and like designing cool stuff people actually buy? Yeah. Who hasn't, right? Well, today's deep dive is all about making that happen and get this without breaking the bank. We're talking completely free. Yep. The magic words are print on demand. Print on demand. It's amazing how accessible starting a business has become these days. Seriously. So imagine this, right? Yeah. You've got this killer design. Let's say, I don't know, a hilarious cat meme on a t-shirt. Okay. I can see where you're going with this. Someone stumbles upon it online. They love it. They hit buy now. And here's the best part. You don't even touch the printing or shipping. Exactly. You're off the hook for all that logistical stuff. Another company swoops in and handles it all. It's like having your own personal team of printing ninjas working behind the scenes. I like that. But yeah, that hands-off approach is a game changer, especially for passive income. Okay, so you're basically selling your designs, these digital blueprints, and someone else takes care of turning them into actual products. Precisely. No more late-night packing nightmares or dealing with, ugh, inventory storage. No more wondering if that giant box of I Love Squirrels mugs is ever going to sell. Exactly. Sign me up, right? <laughs> Okay, let's get real. Where do we even start? What's the platform of choice for budding print-on-demand entrepreneurs? Our experts were unanimous on this one. Etsy. Etsy, like the online craft fair. The one and only, think about it. It's free to set up shop. It's already a massive marketplace for unique handcrafted goods. Okay, so there's already a built-in audience of people looking for like cool, one-of-a-kind stuff. Got it. Exactly, and we're talking millions of active shoppers. Hundreds of millions, according to our research. Hundreds of millions. Wow, that's a lot of potential customers. But okay, wouldn't that also mean there's like a ton of competition? That's where things get strategic. It's less about competing on the product itself because you'll find plenty of t-shirts, mugs, posters. It's more about who you're selling to, understanding the Etsy avatar, so to speak. Etsy avatar. Hold on. Is this like a digital mascot or something? Not quite. It's more like a profile of your ideal Etsy customer. Who are they? What are they into? What kind of humor resonates with them? Our research went deep on this, and it's fascinating stuff. Oh, this I got here. Like, what kind of stuff? Give me an example. Well, for instance, did you know a huge chunk of Etsy shoppers are super drawn to anything vintage? They love that handcrafted aesthetic and bonus points if it's eco-friendly. Huh. So it's not just about having a catchy design. It's about tailoring it to a specific customer. Exactly. You've got to know your audience. Kind of like a comedian crafting jokes for a particular crowd. Okay, that makes sense. So you're saying if I'm designing a t-shirt, it's not enough to just slap on a random I love pizza slogan. Well, Ugh. it depends. Is your ideal customer a pizza-loving hipster who also collects vintage vinyl and rescues stray cats? Because if so, you might be onto something. Okay. Now, okay, I see what you're saying. It's all about that niche appeal. You've got to tap into that. And speaking of tapping into resources. Have you heard of Brian Garvin's free affiliate guide? Brian? Yeah, he has this awesome guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. It's packed with ticks on reaching your target market, which is crucial for any entrepreneur, really. Oh, it does sound super relevant to what we're talking about. Absolutely. It's Brian with an I, right? That's the one. All right, listeners, if you're serious about this whole business thing, you might want to check that out. It's briangarvin.com forward slash bio a links in his YouTube bio, so no need to scribble that down frantically. But okay, back to the design itself. Do I need to be like a Photoshop wizard to make this work? That's the beauty of it. You don't. Design skills are a definite bonus, but not a deal breaker. Phew. That's a relief to hear because, full disclosure, my artistic talents pretty much peak at stick figures. Well, get this. One of the experts we studied actually shared a story about a graphic designer who was struggling big time in the print-on-demand world. Wait, really? A professional designer? Yeah, and they were super talented creating these intricate, beautiful visuals, but they were missing one crucial element, customer-centric design. Okay, so what does that even mean? Customer-centric design, is that just a fancy way of saying, make it pretty? It's more about designing with your Etsy avatar in mind. Thinking about their needs, their sense of humor, their aesthetic. So instead of a generic I heart camping shirt? You could go for something like coffee, sunshine, and tent fires. What more do I need? Oh, I like that. Way more specific and honestly way funnier. Right. It speaks to a particular kind of camper. It tells a story. Okay, I'm starting to get it. But what if your like, me and witty slogans aren't exactly your forte? Where do you even find design inspiration? 
Market research is your best friend. Go on Etsy, see what's already selling well. Don't copy, of course, but use it to understand what resonates with people, what's trending. So it's like you're not reinventing the wheel, you're just like putting your own spin on it. Exactly. And there are a few different approaches you can take with the design itself. Our research highlighted three main categories. You've got your simple but effective text-based designs, like that camping shirt we just talked about. Right. Straight to the point, keep it simple. Then you've got your more graphic-based designs, things that are visually striking, bold illustrations, cool patterns, maybe even something abstract. Ooh, yeah, like those funky retro designs that are making a comeback, love those. Right. And then there's the hybrid approach, combining text and graphics for like maximum impact. The best of both worlds. So many options. And hey, speaking of design, didn't you mention something about AI lending a helping hand to that department? Oh, absolutely. We're living in the future, my friend. Tools like Midjourney can whip up incredible graphics, even if you can barely draw a stick figure like you. Hey, no judgment on my stick figure game, but wait, seriously. How does that even work? It's pretty mind-blowing, actually. You basically give Midjourney a text prompt, like, say, whimsical watercolor camping scene, and bam. And bam, what? Don't leave me hanging. It generates a bunch of unique, royalty-free design options for you, just like that. Whoa. Okay, that is game-changing. See, this is why I love these deep dives. All right, so we've got the product. We've got the design. Now it's just a matter of, like, shouting about it from the rooftops. Right. You're not wrong, but maybe a slightly more targeted approach than just yelling into the void. Okay, so less shouting, more strategic whispering into the right ears. Something like that. Etsy, SEO is going to be your best friend here. SEO. You mean search engine optimization, like all those keywords and algorithms and stuff? Exactly. But on Etsy, it's not just about pleasing the Google gods. It's about understanding how your Etsy avatar searches for stuff. What words are they actually typing in? Ooh, that's a good point. So, like, are they searching for funny camping mugs or unique gifts for hikers or vintage-inspired travel posters? Exactly. You've got to get inside their heads a little bit. Figure out the language they're using. So it's like detective work, but for design. I like that analogy. And just like a detective, you can use certain tools to help you crack the case. Okay, school. What kind of tools are we talking about? Well, the Sales Samurai SEO extension is super helpful. It analyzes search volume and competition on Etsy so you can see which niches are hot and, just as importantly, which ones are already saturated. Smart. Data-driven design. I like it. But even with the perfect SEO, wouldn't the actual presentation matter too? Like a plain photo on a white background versus... I don't know, a cool mock-up of someone wearing your t-shirt design while, like, hiking a mountain. You are speaking my language. <laughs> High-quality mock-ups are huge. They give potential customers a glimpse into, like, the lifestyle associated with your products. It's that whole show-don't-tell thing, but for e-commerce. Exactly. And the good news is you don't have to be a Photoshop pro to create them. Platforms like PlaySeed have tons of customizable templates. Okay, that's a relief. So we're using AI for design, SEO tools for visibility. Hmm. Are there any other tech hacks we can use to streamline this whole process, preferably while keeping things budget friendly? Oh, absolutely. Remember how we talked about uploading your designs to all those different product templates? Yeah, it sounds kind of tedious if I'm being honest. Well, get ready to be amazed because there's a tool for that too. Alex Printify Product Uploader lets you upload your designs in bulk and automatically populates them onto different products. Hold on. It does all the boring data entry for you. You got it. Huge time saver. Time is money. Or so they say. Preach. More time for brainstorming those million dollar slogans, right? <laughs> okay, so this is all starting to come together. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I have to ask, what about when things go wrong? Because let's be real, no business is all sunshine and rainbows. You're not wrong. And that's where the real learning happens, you know? No, tell me more. Uh -huh. I live for a good entrepreneurial, I almost gave up, but then story. Well, remember that expert who talked about pivoting from super intricate designs to funny dog sayings? Oh, yeah. They went from zero sales to about being adaptable, rolling with the punches. I can get behind that. But okay, let's say the designs are solid. The Etsy SEO is on point. How do you actually get those first few sales, those early reviews that build trust? Well, that's where a little bit of hustle comes in. Don't be afraid to tap into your personal network. So like guilt-tripping friends and family into buying a world's okayest cat dad mug. Hey, if it works. But seriously, offering a small discount for an honest review can go a long way in those early days. And you can also connect with micro-influencers in your niche. Micro-influencers. So like 
not mega famous, but they've got a loyal following who actually trust the recommendations. Exactly. So for example, if you're selling those witty camping mugs we talked about, you might reach out to a food blogger who also loves camping and offer them a free mug in exchange for an honest review. Because let's be real, a rave review from a stranger online holds a lot more weight than, my mom says it's cute. Truth. And speaking of reaching a wider audience, this is where that affiliate guide we mentioned earlier comes in handy. Brian Garvin, that's Brian with an I, really breaks down the power of leveraging other people's platforms to grow your business. Right. His 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate Guide, it's free on his website, BrianGarvin.com. The link's in his YouTube bio, by the way. It's all about forming those mutually beneficial partnerships. You get your product in front of a new audience, and the affiliate earns a commission on any sales they generate. Win-win. But it's got to be the right fit, right? Like, you wouldn't ask a beauty influencer to promote your line of fishing lures. Well, you could. I wouldn't recommend it, though. Okay, good point. So it's all about finding those strategic alliances, those people who genuinely vibe with your brand and what you're selling. Absolutely. It takes effort to nurture those relationships, provide your affiliates with the resources they need, and of course, offer fair compensation. But when done right, it can be a powerful growth strategy. All right, so we've covered a ton of ground here from design tips to SEO hacks to the wonderful world of affiliate marketing. But I think what's really resonating with me is that starting a print-on-demand business, it's not just about the technical stuff. A hundred percent. It takes creativity, it takes resilience, a willingness to learn and adapt. It's like you can have the best designs in the world, but if you're too afraid to put yourself out there, if you're not willing to experiment and iterate, they're not going to do anyone any good. You got to put it out there, right? Yeah. Like that saying, uh, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. I love that. So no more procrastinating, no more excuses. Mm. But honestly, for someone just starting out, it's easy to feel like totally overwhelmed. Yeah. What would you say is the most important thing to focus on first? You know, one of the experts we talked to put it perfectly, treat your business like a science experiment. A science experiment. Okay. I'm intrigued. Tell me more. It's all about testing, analyzing, iterating. The beauty of print on demand is you don't need a ton of money up front. No massive inventory to worry about. So play around, experiment with different designs, see what sticks, tweak your Etsy listings, track those keywords, figure out what's actually bringing in traffic. So embrace the learning curve. Don't be afraid to make mistakes because that's how you learn and improve. Exactly. And as those first few sales start trickling in, reinvest that money back into your business. Maybe try out a new design tool or invest in a course on XE marketing. Level up those skills. Exactly. Or even hire a virtual assistant to help with like order fulfillment so you can focus on the bigger picture stuff. So it's all about scaling gradually, one step at a time. And speaking of scaling, Remember Brian Garvin's Affiliate Guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Once you've got a product you know is a winner, that guide can really help you take it to the next level. Absolutely. It's a goldmine of practical advice. Ah. And do we mention it's free? We might have mentioned that once or twice. It's BrianGarvin.com. Brian with an I. The link's in his YouTube bio, folks. Check it out if you're serious about this whole print-on-demand thing. But even without diving headfirst into affiliate marketing, there are tons of ways to grow your business organically. For sure. As your brand starts gaining traction, you can think about branching out. Maybe you start with Etsy, but eventually you create your own standalone website. Or you expand your product line. You start with t-shirts, but then you add like tote bags, phone cases, even custom wall art. Wow, the possibilities really are endless. We've gone from designing funny cat memes on t-shirts to building a full-blown lifestyle brand. That's the power of print on demand. It lets you turn that creative spark, that passion project into a real sustainable business. And hey, who knows, maybe someday you'll be the expert sharing your wisdom on a podcast like this. From cat memes to entrepreneurial icons, I love it. Mm -hmm. But seriously, folks, this has been such an eye-opening deep dive. For anyone listening who's ever dreamt of starting their own business, remember, you don't need a ton of money or even experience to make it happen. It's true. Just a dash of creativity, a willingness to learn, and a whole lot of hustle. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, on that note of empowerment, we'll wrap up this deep dive into the world of print-on-demand. We hope you've gained some valuable insights, practical tips, and most importantly, the inspiration to take action. Don't wait for permission or the perfect time. Start small, dream big, and enjoy the journey. And who knows? Maybe we'll see your awesome designs out there in the world very soon. Until next time, keep learning, keep creating, and keep diving deep.